Ah, uh, just another day in the life of being a stay-at-home plant mom. Life is good. Life is great. Birds are singing. The sun is shining. A perfect day to ride your bike. Tra la 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 la. And just when you think that things couldn't get better than this, just leisurely watering your plants, something happens. <gasps> See those small little webs and those speckled dots moving? Those are spider mites. This is about to ruin my whole day. <gasps> this one too. Ugh. On the new leaf. Why me? <laughs> I immediately began to debate whether I should light everything on fire or not. I can't keep burning every single plant that gets pests. Or can I? So I have 10 minutes. I don't have a watch. I have 10 minutes before I have to pick up my daughter from school. And I have spider mites that I need to treat. Mm. This is not going to happen. But I'm going to try. And every chore starts with a trip to my planty supply cabinet. Aha! D-E. Is it? this. Oh, my microscope. I need to go to my other supply cabinet. Yes, I have more than one. These plants need a bath, and for that, they're gonna need some soap and some oil to get rid of all of those bugs. I use this microscope way more often than I think I would. Like, I know these are spider mites, but this helps to really confirm whether certain pests are beneficial or harmful. I don't wanna get near it. Okay, but this digital microscope is actually really cool. It's completely wireless, and you just set it up, and everything runs off of an app. Ugh. Maybe I should have done a trigger warning before showing these images because it's pretty disgusting. These spider mites are everywhere. And all of these white spots are eggs. So nasty. The video quality on this microscope- Oh my gosh, why is that so big? The video quality on this microscope is pretty good, so thank you for sharing this visual trauma with me. Ugh. But I have to go pick up my daughter from school. I'm back. Time to give these guys a bath. I'm using this peppermint castile soap and cold pressed organic neem oil. I'm horrible at measuring, but I will just rough this. So it's about two tablespoons of neem oil per gallon of water. Ugh. It smells horrible. So we're just gonna... I don't know, whatever. And then I'm using two teaspoons of the Castile peppermint soap per gallon. Good enough. The soap actually creates an emulsion with the neem oil because the oil is not gonna mix with the water. So I'm just going to mix it. In hindsight, I probably should have mixed the neem and the soap together before I added the water, but whatever. Winging it. Here's what this insecticidal soup looks like. Actually, I'm not touching these with my hands. I need my Carino lady gloves. Where's my thumb? Ugh. And then I just basically dunk the plant and give them a good soak, swish them around. This is actually something you can do when you bring home new plants for the first time, just to make sure everything is super squeaky clean, but I didn't do that. And I'm using neem oil because it acts as both a fungicide and an insecticide, so this will definitely get rid of the pests. I'm cleaning the plant. Now let's see how many questions my kids ask me now. Cleaning leaves. Are you getting the bugs out? Yeah. Did you pour the soap and water in there? 
Are your hands dirty? Now I remember why I do most of my plant chores at midnight. It's quiet. And now I'm taking everything outside so I can give it a good thorough rinse. Blast all those eggs off and the soil that got onto the leaves. And this spray bottle actually contains the same mixture of neem oil and castile soap and I'm just spraying everything down one more time for good measure. And this stuff is diatomaceous earth under a microscope. It looks like shards of glass. It'll puncture the exoskeleton of pests and dehydrate them. And I just totally made a huge mess out of this. Also never breathe this stuff so make sure you wear a mask. Anywho, this stuff is completely natural. It's safe around kids and pets which is why I like using it around my home. And I'm doing a wet application because it's just easier to apply. Once the stuff dries, that's when it becomes effective against battling pests. And remember how I sprayed everything down with neem oil? Neem is an oil and it can burn, so I'm turning off my grow lights for a few hours until everything dries. And then I remembered I probably should just quarantine these two plants so that they don't spread to the other plants. And my quarantine zone is always the master bathroom. So here they both are. They look kind of sad, but they'll be fine. I have faith. And the bathroom is actually the perfect spot for these Calatheas because it's higher humidity and it's in front of a window that has filtered light. And somebody please tell me how doing this somehow took the entire day because it's actually dark now. And then I remember there's an entire shelf of plants that I totally forgot to check because the spider mites totally could have spread to each one of them. There weren't any other plants on the same exact shelf, but there's a lot of plants around it, so only one way to check is using the microscope again. What would I do without this thing? So far, so good. Didn't see anything on the pink princess or the pothos, but just for good measure, I am spraying everything down with that insecticide spray, just in case. And it doesn't stop there because you do need to check every few days. I don't see any more signs of mites. No eggs, luckily nothing. And you can see it's still really slick from all that neem oil. And any of the parts that look a little dull, that's actually the diatomaceous earth that's dried up doing its work. But because it's just so oily, I'm actually gonna do one more wash with just the soap. The backs of these leaves used to be just speckled with eggs. It was so gross. Everything just looks completely clean. And then I was just so excited to finally relax and enjoy the rest of my weekend. And then I remembered it's Sunday and tomorrow I have to go to work.